welcome all of you nana here uh, we are going to cover the gop part mainly because uh, these instances are getting cloned very frequently and then uh, since i have already created a full enterprise structure i want to utilize it uh, till before it gets cloned actually <clears throat> so i am not going to conduct the gop part and then uh, it will be again be repeated on the prime time also at the fag end of it after i complete all the all the topics <clears throat> i'll be repeating these things on the uh, prime time also <clears throat> So as far as the GOP is concerned, and a SaaS license, it has got a limited uh, uh, what's called uh, functionality. Say, for example, uh, I have a what's called a customer near Madras. <clears throat> Fine. Uh, in Kanjiburam, I have a customer. And then the item is available uh, from a supplier, which is very near to Bombay. Now. So the Bombay uh, warehouse is going to receive from supplier. So we will now place a purchase order on the Bombay supplier. He will be supplying it over Bombay warehouse. <clears throat> From there, we will not ship it to Madras. And then from Madras, I am going to ship it to uh, uh, the Kanjipuram area. And this is not possible in SaaS license. This is called buy, receive, transfer and ship. So for this is called a multiple levels of fulfillment and then that is not possible in uh, SaaS license. Uh, we had a requirement when I was uh, doing the support for a Saudi, they asked us. So I raised a SR. Oracle immediately told that, please, please ask the customer to go for a pass. So in a past license, all these things are very much possible, whereas in a SaaS, it is not possible. So they are introducing GOP in SaaS. <clears throat> so it doesn't have much of a functionality, uh, rather not a big functionality as far as a SaaS license is concerned. So we are going to see about how uh, it has been configured, but uh, I, we made one announcement on the back-to-back -back buy, and then it worked perfectly, actually. <clears throat> so I'll be while I'm doing it, I'll be going to explain you. Right. So we are going to begin on a back-to-back -back buy. <clears throat> so let me go on and share it. So go there. So let me log in into my instance now. And again, please do not fiddle around. And then if you fiddle around, and then if the sales order itself is not getting created, means what? I can't do anything because I don't know the pricing algorithm. Pricing algorithm is a very complex topic. People go and then fiddle around on that now into off knowledge, they do it, and then they spoil everything. Already Nishta is already a sufferer. She has tried in two, three instances everywhere. She's getting stuck actually here and there. <clears throat> So, but once when you spoil it, uh, I don't know even how to bring it back actually. So the first activity is to create an item. Fine with that point. We'll now go and create an item. Go to the home icon. I go to the product management. And then I go to the product information management. I'm going to get a back-to-back -back item. So there are four activities on the GOP. One is the back-to-back -back buy, one is the back-to-back -back transfer, one is the back-to-back -back make, and then one is the back-to-back -back dropship. So I will be doing one of them every day now, right? every one one topic every day. So that what happens, we will be at least be able to utilize this instance to a great extent. We'll not get an item. We'll not get an item. So it's a one T one. The master will be becoming over here now. Right? So click on OK. It goes to the next screen now. It's not giving a warning. You can ignore the warning. Whenever such a warning is coming, mainly because somebody is working on the item attributes on this on the PIM area of Hangover, there. there's a EFF is there. So on the EFF, somebody is working upon it. And click on yes and then accept the warning. Any warning message is accept that. Go ahead on this one. <clears throat> somebody is working on the EFF on the item attributes section. <clears throat> Go there. So I will now say one T1 B to be right. So it's a B2B buy. So taking copy it. <sighs> I will not put on the description also. Go down. So on the B2B buy, if you go there and see what are the specifications from right? specifications, you go there. <clears throat> so on the manufacturing side, what I was uh, the only thing which you have to see is what costing is enabled, and then uh, the inventory asset value is right. Nothing else is required on this one. And then afterwards, you go to the inventory and then see that all the four are enabled. And then now you go to the sales and order management here. The big change is going to come. Fine, we are going to enable the back to back. So, once into the back to back, then what happens? You must have a G GOP license. If the customer is not having a GOP license, it will not work at all. So, back to back is enabled. Right? The customer ordered is item defining attribute, and then customer order enabled is a status attribute. So, they are already on, and then it is a very much shippable, and then uh, it's uh, basically invoiceable. So, these are all the ones which you have to ensure. Okay? Order management transaction must be enabled. Actually. That is normally enabled by the template. So only thing, I'm, but the main change is what? Back to back is enabled. And then afterwards, you go to the planning and then always ensure that it is the MRP planning. <clears throat> if you have a planning uh, module installed, they will not choose whatever they want. Okay? 
so uh, now uh, previously it was even having a blank now but that has been removed now fine so a yeah, blank is no more so we have to choose one of the, the system automatically chooses only one of them <coughs> this is required for collection act right <coughs> collection and then afterwards you go to the purchasing and then you give a list price for this item it's very important because you are going to make a back to back buy now fine so go there so we have already given a list price on our template so there is no coming up automatically so this is the only change nothing else is there fine brother so only thing is what the change we have made is what we have made the back to back as yes no fine brother so back to back back to back i go to the associations no fine so go there go to the associations let me associate with the child or go to the actions and then go to select nat let me add the child or over there <coughs> one t one and then here i go to the child fine and apply and then click on that it's not done fine brother what i will not go then save it so one t one Back to back buy is now ready. Let us now keep a stock of ten on this inventory now. So I am going to have, keep a stock of ten now. I will now go to the home icon again, and then I go to the supply chain management, supply chain execution now. So I go to the supply chain execution, <coughs> supply chain execution, and then go to the inventory management. And then here I will now have a stock of ten for this now. <coughs> so since I have an access only for one hour, it will be coming up automatically. Oh yeah, now fine. Go that thing. Alright, I will now create a miscellaneous transaction on this now. <coughs> So click on create miscellaneous transaction, and then I will now keep a stock of ten for this now. So drop it down. I will now go for the miscellaneous result. Go there, and drop it down. So click on search now, and then normally I used to use the one one zero find the emissions number also fine. So I'm just using it now, right? but this will all be given by the financial stream. Right? Make it as a possible as yes, not fine. That's not complex, not fine. So if you go one 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 t one, and then give it a both items will be coming. I will be choosing the back to back item. So I will not one t one percentage point on search no fine. <sighs> I will not do the back to back. I will not keep a stock of ten now for this. And now I am going to make a sales order for fifteen quantities now. Go there. So I will not keep it on the FGS now. And then do not receive anything on the stage. Fine, staging is an intermediate area, and so do not have a habit of receiving in stage. Even though it's not wrong, but it is not a correct one. So I will not keep a stock of stock on the market for some time. Now we have to collect that. Uh, thing now fine the item and then the on hand has to be collected fine that one will not go on and perform a collection of that so once when you have an all hand fine brother uh, uh will not have a look at once again i will not see whether the stock is come up or not fine will not have a look at the item quantities also and then how ensure that it is there now fine go to the manager item quantities and then how look at it, whether we have the stock or not <clears throat> so 1t1 and then give it up i want to do the back to back by click on okay so click on search So you must have the sufficient stock of ten now, and I will be making a sales order for fifteen quantities. So system will be interfacing ten quantities into the shipping execution, then five will be sent to the supplier. Actually, that is the idea. So take note. Now we go there. We will not perform a collection. So so go to the supply chain planning. <coughs> you go to the supply chain planning, and then perform the collection. Actually. Supply chain planning, and then go to the planning reports, and then we are going to perform a collection for this now. Always go for a targeted that will be best actually. <coughs> Go to the collect planning data. You go to collect, and then do not necessarily collect everything because we already collect everything. So go there. Go to the targeted. So collect only items on hand now. Fine, there is more than sufficient. Fine, item you bring it away now. Organization is also already collected. Items on the reference data, and then you go to the supply plan, supply planning data. Then uh, bring in the on hand. This is sufficient. And remember, uh, sometimes the net change doesn't work properly. Targeted works nicely actually. So only for two items or so the items on hand, I'm going to perform a collection. So let me click on submit now. It will be getting collected. So you are submitting it from there. So the concurrent is not running. <clears throat> now let it run. Now what you are going to do is we are now going to create a supplier actually. We need a supplier for back to back buy now. So we will now go ahead and then create a supplier on this. It is not getting collected actually there. <clears throat> so we will now go to the procurement and then go to the supplier now. Go to the procurement now. Go to the procurement and then we long go to the supplier. Go to the suppliers. Let me create a supplier. So we are going to place an order on the supplier and then the supplier will be supplying us. And then afterwards we'll be shipping it to the customer. Okay. We long go to the create supplier. So is the supplier? There is a spend authorized one. And the tax organizations what corporation find the remaining are not mandatory when you are manually creating it. But if the supplier is going to create, there are so many things which are mandatory. 
So this much is sufficient. Okay? So mandatory fields when I am filling it up, I can take now. Okay? So the supplier, uh, whatever the supplier name. So I will not say one T one. I will not say uh, sub four one. Fine, the first supplier I am going to create it. Okay? So I am not creating it. So go there. One T one sub one of the one thing. Click on create. <coughs> Let not create a supplier. So, Nana, uh, so as as we understood, like uh, we yeah. have a requirement of 15 quantities, right? So, on hand, we have 10, okay. and yeah. 5, we are getting going to get it from the supplier. Exactly. To put the order. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that is how we are going to do So, 10 will be uh, or I was, uh, met with the internal one, and then the remaining 5, the order will be placed. So, all these things are happening. So, everything is there. I'm not going to the payments. It is customary to fill up the payments at least. No, fine. Even though everything is required, fine. No, make one of them as a default payment. Fine. Select it and then uh, sell the check. No, fine. <coughs> and then make it the default. So, that's sufficient. I go this place. Go there. Give a save. So, uh, other than that, what happens? Uh, the business classification, the products and services are uh, informative purposes only. It doesn't have any much of a functionality as such. No, fine. So, to understand what exactly is doing it. And then you go to the address. No, fine. Go there. Uh, go to the address and then I'll not get the address. <clears throat> so click on plus and then I'll be getting an address now. <coughs> so address number one, so one T one underscore address one now and the country is United States. Give it a now. Not use it. Okay, now. And then always use US to be working very well actually. It's a 1T1. That's line one. And then I will now give the postal code now. 10030 on I will now choose one of them. The remaining gets filled up. And then I'm going to enable the ordering and remit. Fine. This is for purchase orders and then for this for the payable something like that. So email ID is required actually. Find this place. I will now use in for Nana because I'm now going to enable the supply portal also. Fine. And then at gmail.com. Remember. This is not going to be the what's called uh, uh, the username actually. Fine, email ID is not the username. I go that part. So the one. I go that part. So this much is sufficient as well. Address is concerned. Now I go that part. I will not give a save and close on address. <clears throat> this much is sufficient. Fine, click on save and close. And then we go to the contacts. And then the one contact is going to reside over here now. The contact will be residing over here now. <clears throat> so the address is now created. So go there, go to the space, and then I go to the contacts. Now, after profiling address, and then you go to the contacts, and then come back to the side. Actually, you go to the contacts, and then let us now create the contact. Now, click on plus. Now, you get the contact. So the username for the supplier will be first name dot last name. Find that way. I will now say one, and then one, Ananta one, Nana one will be there. What's called as the thing. So here also, whatever you give this fine info, Nana, at gmail dot com. Go there. So click on it and then go there. Go it. And then you can even make it to the administrative contact or whatever it is. Not fine with that part. And then go to the actions and then go to self NAT and then I'm going to select the address. <clears throat> so click on uh, what happens. You're entering now. Boy, the thing is coming here. Fine. Just come now. Ah, what am I going Uh, go there. So Ananta one, Nana one is there. I go to the actions and then go to select an ad. So you have to have this now. Find that in this place, the address has to come now. And it's not coming. We have one address already available now. Now give a cancel. What happened to the contacts? Nana, Nana, you need to you need to click on that uh, plus button. It was there down. Yeah, I was I was not doing it. Or, okay, wait. Right. Now go to one plus number. Uh, yeah, this plus uh, you're saying, you know, yeah, actually, yeah. I'm gonna add on whatever it is, everything is same actually. Uh, I might not have given a save, I will not give a cancel. No, fine. After having created the address, I might not have given a save actually. Uh, the same. So, so, did you create the site, Nana? Uh, the site the is not, the site will be coming afterwards, no, and after address, after the contact as well, and then afterwards, only site will be coming. So, go there, we'll go to the actions, and then we'll just select an ad. So here itself, it has to come now. In this place, it's not coming now. Right? One T one, and I'll make a search on this now. Right? The address has to come now. Right? It's not coming at all. 
one one to consult you. So this is still coming. The profile change request is pending for the supplier actually. <clears throat> spending on the credit because the approval has to go there, no fine. So we have any withdrawal, no fine, put actions then edit no fine. You don't try to withdraw it or something like that. You know. Uh let me at this stage submit it directly and then see no fine. So click on submit whether it gets submitted or not. Internal profile change request was submitted. Fine. It contains changes that requires approval. Actually, I think we are now made it is out of the most similar that get to the other one. So click on search no fine. The approval has to go through now. Oh god. Yeah. Now, now we can approve from BPM also. Approve from BPM. BPM approval. Can can you go to the uh, ring button uh, in the navigation uh, next to the flag, right? Uh, in the top. Where you want to go? Work oh. list, yeah. Okay, work list. We'll not see whether anything is there or not. Have no. Work list. You should be having, I think, you have full access. Uh, work list. No, from here only. That If you click on that button, it will take you there. This yeah. one, huh? Bill is there. Yeah, click on that. On the top, let me scroll. Scroll. Yeah, scroll. Go to the work list on the right. Yeah. And uh, go to administrative task, the left. I don't know whether I have made him as a supplier administrator or not. I went on a made him as a. <clears throat> no, I think you have added supply manager only. Supply manager, only. supply administrator, I have not made it. Okay, then I will not create one more supply. Fine. That's okay. If it comes through here, it's okay. So from here also, you can approve it. No, no. Yeah, go to administrative task. Uh, how to administrative task. task. Yeah. And you can see uh, me and my group, right? You can change that to. Uh, assign, yeah, yeah. assign, assign is there, right? Uh, assign. Yeah, no, no, the top uh, LOV, LOV. You just click any, yeah, any. Now you search for that profile request. I think it is there in the top, the first. Uh, yeah. Change request. And I was gone through via this function. Thank good, good information now. <clears throat> the learning for all of us now. You can reassign to yourself also. If you can approve it, we can approve it. Uh, action. Let us go there. Uh, reassign. Reassign. Reassign to me, actually. Huh? Yeah. You reassign to yourself and approve it. Yeah. <clears throat> so username is one t one or the EMP okay one t one one t one let me just search the username is starting on one t one ID is there also yeah it has come yeah yeah select it and then come down here yeah. okay just say okay. And now you have to just refresh that and uh, you can approve it. Okay. The action performed was completed. Nothing I want. I will now receive it. It must have gone there. Nothing. So I have to get your notification icon over here. No, no, no. no. You, you, there only it will be SN. Yeah. Uh, in the work list itself, you closed. Show all that. Yeah. And then the work list itself will be coming in. So I don't see any. <clears throat> yeah, the first one. The top first one. Yeah. It's come to me. Yeah. The up button has to come. 
Good, good learning. <clears throat> so it has to vanish now. So solve the problem. We'll now go there and then how will you look at it up? <clears throat> it is not done now. So now go there. Go to the picket one and go to the supplier and then query for the supplier. The IA account has to go away now. <clears throat> so go to the managed suppliers, 1T1. Click on search, my friend. You go. I don't want the I still stay here. <laughs> Or otherwise, I have to get a preference. Uh, no, no, no. You just have to wait for it to come. Okay. So it takes some time. Oh, yeah, it is gone. Yeah, exactly. It is gone. So, click on it. So, I'll now go to the contacts now. And then I'll now create a one now. So, in the contacts, how come it is not coming at all? The plus symbol is not coming. Sir, I did. Click on it. Click on it. God. Thank you, God. Now we'll now see on the address line and actually self matter where the address is coming. I'm going to see why it's coming. Yes, exactly. So click on apply and then click on okay. Fine. So good, good learning. <clears throat> Go there. I will now say Ananta. Nana one. So I will now put in for Nana. Gmail.com. Okay, fine. This much is sufficient or something that's not. So that is sufficient. So we'll now create a user account on something. Click on create it. So the moment you create a user account, ananta one dot nana one will be the username actually, and then it automatically assigns this much of a responsibilities for this now. Okay, fine. So click on what save and close now. Fine. So the contact is now created. Fine. Save and close. Ananta. So, Nana, why, uh, why we are creating user account that is required for self service, right? Yeah, yeah. Because supplier is not going to send the ASN now. Fine. We are going to make a result for the ASN. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Go there is not done. Not. Now go to the sites and then it has now created the site. The plus symbol is now coming. Okay. So since the profile change was not done, so that's why the plus symbol was not coming. Okay. The profile change request was pending actually there. The right. So then the site is not coming. I drop it down and then choose the site. Okay. I will now change the site to site one. So this is okay. Thank you. That the moment you give a save, the remaining tab region will be coming automatically. Thank you. Save now. The purchasing, receiving, everything will be coming up now. From save. It's exactly the same like what we have in Ebus now. Nothing depends on this now. And then uh, we are now discussed a lot on the purchasing area. Thank you. Go to the invoicing and then make the invoice currency as well as your payment currency as US dollar. And drop it down. Make it US dollars. Now make it US dollar. <clears throat> And then afterwards, you go to the site. Payments is not required. This is the, this is the moment of sufficient. You go to the site assignments and then I give the site. This is equal to multi org access control. Fine, click on plus no point. Don't go for automatic creation because what happens if you have multiple views, everything will not get assigned automatically. You know. So you manually do it. That is the best way now. When you have multiple views, it is uh, preferable to do it manually. So see, we have only one BU here. It's okay. But in reality, it is uh, preferable to do via manual. So I will now say 1T1 and then I will now put the lock one over here now as a shift location. And then similarly, the built location could be one to one, lock one. So this much is sufficient. Fine with that. So the site assignments is equivalent to multi org access control. So we have done everything now. Fine with that. So the remaining will be done with the payable stream. Fine with that. Close by which will not complete. So the supply location is not complete. Click on it. Go there. And then finally, when everything is completed, we can go there and click on submit. By submitting it, it will be done. The change is here. Now we'll now go there, click on it. We'll now go to the tools and then we'll now go to the ship. What's called your this thing now? <clears throat> we'll now go to the tools now. We'll now go to the tools. And then we'll now go to the uh, what's called security console. And then we will now change the what's called the username now. Fine for that. Make a change of username. So go to the users now. Fine for that. It is Ananta one. Fine. That is no query. No fine. So this is the way you coming. Fine. You now edit it first of all. We'll now raise the passwords now. Fine. I know it's important. I will now make it as what? Welcome one two three capital W.
it account is a password now fine i'll change the username to a1.n1 so it's easy for us to what up work on it thank you for editing so let me use the name so it's a a1.n1 and that's it fine go that take on save and close now that's sufficient fine these are the six standard rules given to the supplier actually fine so we fine go that take on save and close by which the, the username of the supplier is not changed actually <clears throat> Open up the open up browser and then have a look at it. Whether it's all working or not properly. Go there. So it's online. Fine. Fine. Then we we'll know. See whether the here the supplier is able to log in. I have not opened up one more browser for this. Not fine. Not. I have no problem. Go there. Click on it. I have no paste this one. Enter now. Let me log in with the supplier. Actually, fine. We need a different browser for this. Not fine. That one. So a one dot a one. It's it. Welcome. login so we are logging in to the supplier and remember in ebus we have a different url for a supplier portal but here it's all same now so you'll go that you'll now go to what we'll go to the supplier portal over here now fine click on the supplier portal you can now see this and that's it fine we'll now we'll now leave it as such now so everything is visible now so every activity has been covered in the, in the procurement training actually so the supplier user is now completed now we come back here now fine we'll now We will now again go to the plan inputs and then see whether our item is collected or not. I'll go to the supply chain planning. We'll now go to the supply chain planning. <clears throat> so go there. You go to the supply chain planning and then go to the plan inputs and then see whether our item is collected or not. And the back-to-back -back item. So we already did the targeted collection for this. Now find one T one. So we'll have the standard order as well as the back-to-back -back item must be available over here. So it is available. So it is now completed. Now we are going to do the GOP setup section. The GOP setup we are going to do. So go there. So we'll now go there and then create one. So we are going to what do the do this stuff and go there. Go to the order management and then go to the global order policy. From there we will remember for this you need a license actually. So go there. Go to the order management now. <clears throat> any doubts at any point of time, please open your mic and then speak. Now we don't we don't have, we don't have much of people here now. So you can even talk to me so that you can understand. You go to the order management and then go to the GOP. <clears throat> If you have not bought the license, the icon will come. But only you can do an infinite ADP. And apart from that, you cannot do a supply chain ADP. Actually, we are not going to make a supply chain ADP. I will go to the manage ADP rules. <clears throat> so the demand supply balancing you are going to do now. Can you come plus now? I will not say it's a one t one. I will not say uh, supply chain ESC underscore ADP. Supply chain ADP. I am going to make it. So there are three promising modes. One is a supply chain, one is a lead time based, and then this will be used by the manufacturing, and then one is the infinite based, where we are now bypassing the supply chain actually. So now we are going to go for a supply chain ADP. So here, this is again for a different module. Find the planning sector. The planning center will be using these things. Fine, so sure, don't touch it. Fine, go there. So this area is also for mainly for planning. So for the planning not to affect it, what happens? You go there and then make it as what user defined. Fine, go there and then make it as fifty days now. Fine, so you won't be having much of a problem on this. Fine, go there. So here, past everything you can give fifty over here. Fine. So once when you learn planning, they will be teaching you everything also. Fine, go there. Make it as easy as you can. Ah. What is it? Good morning, Nana. Sir, sir, one question. Yeah. yeah tell me. Uh, we don't have cross talk as a supply type. Uh, cross. Infusion. What is it? Cross talk. Cross talk. Cross docking. Fine. Cross yeah. docking is not a supply type. Even in EBS also, we don't have now. Do you have anything such cross docking as a supply type? No, no. Yes, yeah, sir. Because cross docking, we do have supply type as cross docking. No, no, no. I don't find anything in there as a cross docking as a supply type. Actually. So now, what are all the things you are going to balance basically? I am not going to balance on hand. I am going to have the purchase orders. So normally, you will be enabling everything. Fine, you will be enabling everything. Fine, because in the real scenario, you may be having internal requisitions. All these things will be coming. In the in our case, it's not so fine for that point. So I will not put the fulfillment and then this one. Fine. So these are the demands. So we are going to balance the supply against the demand, and then we are going to promise the customer actually. Fine, we are able to this thing. So this much is sufficient. <clears throat> and then you go to the ATP rule assignments. So we are now creating a, a supply chain ATP now. Fine, click on the ATP rule assignments. And then here, what happens? You go there, click on plus one. And then we have done on a category also. On a category, it worked actually. So what happened is that uh, we have in uh, one of the Saudi project, uh, uh, we have got around twenty uh, different uh, domains, or rather twenty uh, different types of suppliers basically, and every type of supplier has been made as a category. So for example, uh, the uh, medicines, 
then afterwards what was uh, the hand gloves <clears throat> like ways what was all the medical uh, different suppliers supplies have been made as a category and then whomsoever is supplying those categories it worked actually fine it worked and then uh, item level is uh, very very difficult if you have some uh, 10000 items fine every item has to have an entry so it's very, very difficult so normally what happens you go for a org level fine org level atp is okay uh, so supply chain for entire org is going there fine but uh, again uh, uh, this org is also not that good actually fine go for an item organization is the best one so either you go for a category or item organization that is what oracle strongly recommends fine and then uh, you avoid item item is a huge one and then organization also they were asking us to avoid it so item organization is the best one fine go that point and that uh, perfectly matches your all the global order promising assign to organization fine one to uh, is already collected it will be coming out there fine so item is what is a 21 and then give it time fine i'm going to go to back to back right? item organization is the best one for a uh, global order promising and that's it fine go that so my sc supply chain adp is now ready brother so click on seven close now. Now, I'm not going to create two such uh, sourcing rules. Now, fine, that's not, I'm not create two such sourcing rules. I'll make two such sourcing rules. <clears throat> Go to this place. And then let us not create two such sourcing rules. Go to this place. And then here, after the ATP rule is completed, we go to the managed sourcing rules. And then we'll be creating two such sourcing rules. So, first is what? I will say 1T1. I will now say uh, B2B, fine, buy. B2B, buy. So this is my one. So you will all be creating with your prefixes, remember, fine. And then similarly, SCP rule, the supply chain ATP also will be creating it in yours. So go there, click on it. And then, uh, I don't know, you have a plus one. So click on plus and then number it. So, so now, why are you doing this uh, sourcing rule? Yeah, we need to buy now, fine. First of all, you need to buy. So that's the reason that you are buying. So we are going to set it to buy, basically. So B2B buy, fine. One T1 B2B buy. So, take copy from there. so this must be a global sourcing rule now. Will be a global sourcing rule and go that point and then click on plus now. Fine. <clears throat> so go there. It must be global actually. If I'm going to click on actions and then go to add a row. I'm going to buy from this supplier. So you have a transfer from and then buy from. Click on the buy from. So supplier is what? 1T1. And then we have a sub one. We have got only one supplier available now. 1T1. Click on search now. You're going to buy the entire quantity only from the supplier actually. Why it's not coming? Submitted it also, no? Right? One and then make a search now. Go to the advanced. Starts with one and then make a search. Now. It's not coming by from. So global. What happened? No, no. Have you given the business unit assignment? Yeah, certain site assignments have been given now there. <clears throat> No go there. I don't know. Go to the supplies and operations request. No go to the manage supplies and make a query on this one. Manage supplies. <coughs> I have submitted this also. No fine. One T one. <coughs> Click on search. No fine. I have to submit it. So I think uh, probably that must have also gone for a spend authorized. Then it is active. No fine. It must be active. Inactive since also no fine. Is there any approvals that has gone or not? I am not sure about it. It has gone for any approvals. Ah, uh, now right click and then duplicate, and then you must see whether any approvals have been enabled or not. No, no, there's a notification is showing already in here. Ah, 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 ah. Now see this something here. So you're saying that there's a notification there. So click on it. Now see. Supply profile change request was approved. And that's okay. Supply profile change request for so and so. Transfer to this. Yeah, you added the site or something, right? So because of that, click on approve. No, fine. There is an approve button is still coming up on uh, invalid action. So this is okay. Fine. There is no such real uh, site was approved. It is not saying no. why that the site is not being dismissed. <clears throat> Supplier profile change request. If you click on approve. वर्कलेस
ini yeah. automatically generate password now you so supplier contact user account for vision or not ours no okay. so lana you can click on the assigned any you change it to assigned oh, no no there can say da no there only you yeah. have some any right assigned here yeah, assigned yeah. Click, click on the uh, the third one supply and contact user account for vision corporation is a vision corporation i am not in the vision now nothing is upon the one then why it's not coming here in this place it has to come now but status is showing already active yeah 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 user account is pending for approval looks like supplier is okay right. i was there so where is my tab uh, none in the work list uh, you have something called user account right i think that you need to approve user account on the left hand side uh, i think the fourth one uh, the third one that is a vision corporation that one that one the vision corporation Ananta, oh God, it's coming on my name actually. Those are actions in Angulo. Uh, supplier contact user account for Vision Corporation was created actually, but I was able to log in. Now, fine. You are granted access to the supplier application portal. It's okay. So I am able to log in. User account is I am able to log in. Going to withdraw. Not going to withdraw. So Vision Corporation is the one which has now gone there. Oh God, I am unable to understand. So we'll again go there and then see the summary. Supplier, it's active, na? Right? The status is active. <clears throat> no, no, you need, need to check that in the site uh, contacts. In the contact, you have that user account, right? Which you have created for the no, no. Go to contacts. One contacts. Uh, site is there. Now no, no. click contacts. On the and then one second, I mean, have a look at the site assignments properly. Whether it is not there or not, I know how to get it. <clears throat> I think you have not done that site assignment. No, no, site assignments I've done. I did the site assignments. So that is what I'm making a check actually. Yeah. Go to the site assignments. It is already done now. So have I submitted it? I'm saving close now. It is submitted actually. It has to be submitted. I might have submitted it. I'm not sure about it. Let me submit it. Can you go to contacts, Nana? No, no. Contacts. Okay. Contacts. Submit it now. Now submit it. No, need requery. So requery. Then you query. Contact is not a very big thing. And even if the contact. No, no. Your user, user account is created right there, right? Contacts. In the contacts. User account is existing. Active. Okay, we'll now log out and log in, and then I'll go there and sign out on Zimi. Ah, so many problems are coming on this place. <laughs> so go there. I think I have not configured a procurement at all. Yes, correct, correct, correct. The procurement has not been configured at all. That may be the reason. And let me configure the procurement now. So the procurement has not been configured because of which all these problems are coming up. And let us now configure procurement actually. So go there. So I have not done the procurement at all. <clears throat> so you go there. Go to the search now. <clears throat> you are going to make a purchase order. Fine. So it is a configure procurement business function. This is a must. I have not done it. So configure procurement business function. Around. So you will go there and then configure it. This is not done. Go to the place. And that is the reason that is all happening. So let's go to this page one t one, and then I click on okay. This is not done. So the procurement business function has to be configured. There is a mistake. So the payment terms is what it drop it down to one or not. And shipping whether is okay, and everything is okay, and everything is required. Inventory all is a must for it. Drop it down. Now choose what. So keep on searching. <clears throat> so one capital T and then enter. Now choose the must for again. So line type is goods. <coughs> Currency is US dollars. 
Okay, the third language is American English. It's all okay. The spelling is okay. So click on save and close by which it is now completed. So the configure procurement business function is a basic requirement. So having done this, let me log out and log in now. So sign out and sign in. Now we go there, go to the plan inputs. So go there, go to the procurement, not the procurement, the long order, not the first order management, and then go to the GOP, <clears throat> and then we'll now create the sourcing rule. So we go to the manage sourcing rules. So go there. So at 21 underscore, uh, I will now say global buy. I want to global buy. Sorry, I will go plus on the way. So click on plus. And then I will say 1T1 underscore global buy. So click on the number of description. So global one point, click on plus one. <coughs> so the start date is coming, thank you, on action. So I'm going to go to the arrow. This time it has come, thank you, that one, buy from. Come on! 1T1, and then give a tab. Uh, yeah, I am in a, uh, uh, in a class actually. Fine. What do you want? Hello? Yeah, can you call me after an hour's time? I will not respond to you. Okay. I am in a classroom. Right. Right. So you go to the advanced. What else is missing? Okay. Apart from uh, the configure procurement business function, what else is required actually? Something else is also required. Okay. Repositioning business function is not required, but the procurement business function has been given. Now. Supplier has been added over there. What else is required? So I will now open up my procurement worksheet and then have a look at it. So let me open up the procurement worksheet and then quickly go through this. Forgotten that. So fusion um, procurement worksheet actually. Open it up. Uh, it's okay, it's okay. Something is missing on this. Uh, the employee is not given any job and position. It doesn't matter. The job, you know, we are given some job. Something. <coughs> so not required. And career uh, document numbering, it will not take up from one actually. And if it is not given, it is not required. Line type is not required. And, uh, uh, one thing we'll know is we'll know, sir, try to create a purchase order and then see whether it works or not. We'll not try to create a purchase order and then see whether it works or not. We'll cancel <coughs> <coughs> Click on it. Now go to the procurement. Go to the procurement and I will now go to the purchase orders and we'll see whether you are able to create a purchase order or not. So click on it. We will now create an order. Now. So create an order. So purchase order, everything is coming back. One T1 is a supplier. I don't know whether they are able to put the supplier over there. Supplier is coming. So everything has come up and click on create. One day one business unit, everything is not coming. We'll now see whether you're able to complete. The requisitioning BU also coming. I have not configured the requisitioning. The requisition configuration is not defined. Okay, yeah, it's coming. So that may be the reason. I have not done that. So that is also required actually. I thought that since I'm not going to make any PR, uh, it's not allowing me to do it. So click on search. <clears throat> so configure. Positioning business function. Sorry, it's not taking a longer time now <laughs> because I've forgotten all these things actually, because of which I'm making all these mistakes. Requisitioning business function is also required. I thought that it is not required. Uh, where is my 1T1? 1T1 business. 
So this is also a point. <coughs> so both are here. There is not a default derivative of organization. It is the IBU actually. So wrong nomenclature actually. Not on the master. <coughs> not on the This much is sufficient. This is okay. Everything is not on the The only thing shift location is what? 21. I will not put uh, the lock. It will be a default. So click on save and close. Okay. Changes the same. You now see whether this is now sufficient or not. So this completes the procurement setup. So I'm going to sign. So I'm going to sign. <coughs> sign in now. You know what the, uh, what's called order management? You know what the GOP area? And I will not try to create all this thing. So go to this place, go there. You will know what, what are the managed sourcing rules? I will create it now. So click on plus one. So here I will not say one thing. So the one thing you want to do. What are actions we would add a row? So type is by. <coughs> so one T one, you can give it a tap. Still not coming. Come on. One T one. The supplier is not coming. Nada sir, do we need to run the collection of the plan? No. Fine. For this one. Uh, uh, okay, I will do one thing. I will not try to collect the suppliers also. I am not sure about it. So suppliers need to be collected. Not, not sure. You have uh, raised a very valid question now. <laughs> will not go there. Uh, this, uh, uh, service provider model is not required, right? No. Not. So let us collect the suppliers also. Must see. Go there. Go there. It's called collect planning data. Let me collect the suppliers. So go there, go to OPS, and then I make it as a target and let me tell the suppliers. <clears throat> so that's why when you are working on a vision, now find you won't be understanding about what are the things that are missing actually. So the most collect suppliers on the target matter, frankly, on supply. <clears throat> uh, so sourcing rule for buy should be local, right, sir? For only for no, shipping no. should be global, right? Which is not our local, it is a global action. <clears throat> for a back to back, it is a global action. Not a local. It is not ox specific, the global one. So go to this place. And you go to the tools. And you go to the schedule the process and then how look at it. So once when the load entity has started, then what about the gentleman go on and make it pretty on Right. Load entity has now started now. So we'll now go there to my right click and then duplicate. Not sure about whether we need to collect the suppliers or not. So normally what happens we do a full collection actually, right? That is the way we do it. So go there. We go to the order management area. <coughs> So for the order management, and then you go to the global order policy. So go there, and then here, I will not um, go to the managed sourcing rules. So click on this. So it's a global one only thing. Good actions, and good add a row. So it's a buy from. What's coming? So who is this? Who is this? Who told me about the collection actually. Who is the guy? Who told me? Gaurav. Huh? Gaurav. Gaurav told about the collection. It may be correct actually. Right? So once when you collect the supplier, then only it's coming. Beautiful now. I will not say global buy. So Gaurav was told that you collect supplier now. I saw the collecting supplier now. It has come now. So it looks like it needs <coughs> global. I'm going to go that one. <coughs> supply side, drop it down. <coughs> now search for it. And then do it. 
<coughs> the collection process is still going on now. Fine, it is not coming up here now. Starts with one uh, site. No, yes, no. Contains. At least supplier has come. No, fine. That's okay. IP. Is the site one is the site name no? Okay, not coming. Okay, leave it as such and then let us know who go for it. At least supplier has come. So allocation percentage is 100. And then go there, rank is one. And shipping method is not a must. So we are going to buy from the supplier actually. Supply site is not coming, doesn't matter. It's not, it's not so this global buy, I will be doing it now. And then one more sourcing rule we have to make, and then everybody has to add only on that one. The second sourcing rule which I'm going to make, everybody has to add your org only over here because we are now working on a common site actually. So I will now say it's an OEM global ship. So everybody has to query this and then add your org over here because we are all working on it. So even though we belong to different, different structures actually, but here inventory org uh, has to be common actually. Inventory org, the structure doesn't come into picture. I know that one is a global ship. I know that. So go there, go down, and click on plus one. And then here, I will not go to the good actions, and then I will not say add a row. So here, I am going to transfer from now. I go there, click on transfer from. So I will be putting my organization. So everybody has to put your organization over here. And one T one one. And then here, allocation for switch. It's hundred percent. Rank is one. So let us say you are having some uh, what was it? Two T one. So two T one one will be there. You have to add on the same global ship only. Remember, are you understanding it? Then you have to add on the same global ship one more line. You should not create one more sourcing rule. Remember, anybody there in the in the classroom? Fine, Gaurav, have you understood it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So once when you have a own structure, let us say you are not creating on a two T. Let us say so two T one one has to be added over here, and then you should not create the global ship at all. Only you had to add as a rank two. Got it? So everybody has to add it as a rank two. Rank two, rank three, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Your inventory org has to be added over here. Remember. First one you have to create. First one, everybody will be getting the global buy, you will be creating it. But apart from that, what happens is this will be done like this. Come on, say close now. Right? We will not see the collection process might have got ended. We will not see the site is coming or not. Right? One T1. I will not see whether the site has come or not. We will not do it now. Right? So go the global buy is there now. Uh, one T1 global buy. Can I edit it now? Go down. Then we will see whether the supply site has come on. Click on search now. So click on search. Okay, it's not coming, it doesn't matter. Leave it as at least supplier is there. It has to work, I think. It's okay. I will not give a cancel and then come out. So two sourcing rules. One is you will be creating this, and then one is a OM sourcing rule. Okay? Here you will not create the sourcing rule, remember. You will only use mine now. And then add your org on this. In this place, you go there, and then you will not add this org. Global you will only edit it and then add your org as a next rank, the next available rank. <clears throat> you can see. So <clears throat> the sourcing rule is now complete. One you'll be getting it, one you'll be adding your org. Now we'll now go to the assignments. Now, fine. So there are three activities in the GOP. One is what? Manage ATP rules, one is the manage sourcing rules, and then the final one is what? Manage assignments. Thank you for the manage assignments. So here I will now query the global order form to say glow on the entry now. So this is the one I'm going to verify. Click on it. I will not enter. Fine. Click on edit. There will be plenty of entries are there. So you have to add an entry. So click on plus one. So here, first of all, I'm going to buy and then receive. Now, fine. Go to this place. I will not go to the item organization. Here. So choose the item organization. This is the top priority actually. Item organization. So organization is what one T one. Then give a tap. <coughs> We're giving a tap now. Fine. Item is what one T one. Then back to back buy. So choose it now. Fine. Go to And then choose your sourcing rule. And then here. It will be a one T one, and then your your number, and then give a tap. That will be only one global buy will be there. And then the next one you will not add. I only will be adding. Okay? I will not give a save. Okay? So I will not adding it. So next one I will only do it. You will not do anything at all in this place. Remember, I am again and again telling you. I will only add now. Add row. So the next one I am going to add it now. I will be doing it. Go to the global area because we are all working on a common instance, and so this has to be done like this. Okay? So global, I will not go there. It is a global one now. Global one. So go to the sourcing type, sourcing type, and then here I will not put OEM and then give a tab. 
and that's it. So this he will not do. So on the sourcing rule, you will not add your org on the OM global buy, global ship, now, global ship. On the global ship, you will not add yours. Whereas here, I have not added now. Fine. Is this clear? Can you give a green tick against your name now? Fine. On the assigned sourcing rules, on the sourcing rule assignments, you will only add only your uh, uh, what I was saying, your, your buy only. So you will not add the global ship as well. So what about others now? Fine. Have you Muttu? Have you understood it now? Fine. You should not make a mistake. Otherwise, it will not work at all properly. You will not make the second okay. of the global one. Fine. Okay. Gaurav? Okay, fine. Good. So Gaurav might have understood it. So in this place, I know only added, you will not add it. <clears throat> you will only add your item organization for a global buy, basically. So go back to concept and So the GOP is now fully set. Actually. So after having set the GOP, what you have to do is you have to perform again a collection. So we'll now go on and perform a collection. So click on collection. So you go there, we're not running down. So we'll now perform a collection over there. <clears throat> so you know, go to the supply chain planning and then go to the plan input so that we'll now perform a collection only for the order orchestration reference objects. So fine, on, perform a collection also. So go to the collect planning data. So OPS and then the targeted one. So OPS and target one. So here I will now choose what order orchestration reference objects. Order orchestration reference objects. So this is where we have done three activities. One is what? Yeah, supply chain ATP, and then uh, two sourcing rules out of which one I have created, the other one you have added, and then you will not do anything on the assignments. Actually. I, have, I have done the assignments commonly for everybody. So all the orchestration of the object, I'm not going to do it as the collection is about, is a targeted thank you, thank you, thank you. If it doesn't work, then we have to do a full collection actually. That's the biggest problem. So that takes a longer time actually. So we know that <clears throat> click on it. So we go to the tools and then have a the schedule process. So there's no running. <clears throat> so the previous one was already done. At the item level, you don't need to give the ATP uh, rule assignments. Uh... Uh, ATP rule, fine. We have a supply chain ATP. I have already given an item organization level. Actually. Item org is the best yeah. level actually. I have done an item org. Got it now? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> you want to have a look at it? I'm not sure. I don't know what. But in EBS, we used to give at the uh, item level, right, sir? <clears throat> at the uh, item I'm level, sorry. we go on. Item give org that. is the best level actually. That's what. <clears throat> okay. Oracle that comes from. Even though we can give it item level, but item org is the best level. So okay. you can do that. Okay. I will go to the order management and then I go to the global order form. Who is this? <coughs> so this is Mahindra, sir. Mahindra, okay. So 1T1, if you go on the query, it cannot see this. Click on edit. So if you go to the ATP assignments, fine. This item org, that is the best level, actually. Okay. And then we tested it oh. on a category. Category also worked excellently. In one of the in a Saudi project, we were having multiple items. We have 15 different categories. Fine. So on, on every category, we made an input, and then it worked. It is uh, covering more than one lakh items. So that is the best. Thing. If you have a, okay. if you can categorize the item on a what happens a proper manner. Uh, that is why initially you have to plan in a very proper manner. So, <coughs> because if you do a haphazard way of categorization, uh, you cannot use this at all. If you do it in the initial status of the plan, uh, all the types of supplies, what I'm going to go, uh, putting in one category. So collected by category, it will be easy. Otherwise, item, how can I enter one, one lakh items? If you have a FBDA template, it's okay. I'm not sure about that. We have a FBDA template for the ATP, this one. But there it's okay. Otherwise, it will be a very, very difficult task to make a manual entry here. Mm, yeah. Here, uh, the, uh, what's called the work uh, problem will be there. Right? You have to optimize the work actually. Right? Category works very well. Uh, we are testing it. It is working. So Nana, what is the troubleshoot for this collection data if any error or anything comes? Oh, you have to only talk to planning. Planning will have a lot of other things. So we have to wait for this uh, uh, concurrent to complete now. <clears throat> the last concurrent is nothing but a, uh, uh, what's called, a, uh, something on the deletion of uh, some stage data actually. So once that is completed, we can run the refresh and start it. So I will now stop the recording. Stop it now. Yeah.
uh, actually here, what happened is that we are now running this collection actually, fine. The collection has to get completed. And then afterwards I had to run the refresh and start now. So it's now still going on now, fine. So we will now meet at 5 p.m. in the evening and then we will now continue on this. So the setups are complete actually. So the collections as well as the refresh process is done. Then again, uh, we need around half an hour to 45 minutes for completing the transactions actually. So I'm now stopping this uh, session and then we will now be back at 5 p.m. India. Okay. Okay. Bye for now. Thanks, sir. Bye. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Welcome back, Nana here. In the morning, we have uh, done the setup for the back-to-back -back buy. So today now, we are going to make a transaction. We are going to perform the transaction for the back-to-back. -back. So let me go and then log in now. So we are logging in. So in the morning, uh, we made one uh, mistake actually <clears throat> that I corrected it actually. So if you go to uh, order management, and then if you go to the global order form using, we, we couldn't do it actually in the morning. <clears throat> so if you go there and then have a look at manage sourcing rules. And then I will now query for one T1 entering now. So in the global buy, if you go and then edit, the supplier site was not coming. I don't know what for it is not right now. The supplier site has been populated as well as the source supply system has also been populated. And then afterwards, I performed a full collection and then a full refresh actually. Fine, these two things I did now. Uh, and now let us go there and make a check of it. <clears throat> we will not create a new sales order. So this is the only change I made. And then afterwards, I did everything now. So click on the home icon, and then you go to the, go to the order management, and then click on the sales orders. Now fine, you will not create a new sales order. And then uh, we have a 10 qualities in the stock actually. What you want. We have a quantity of stock. Then, <clears throat> so one T one. Put the customer over here. So we have on and of ten, and then let me go for fifteen quantities for this. And then since the item is not having any price, it will be taking up a unit price. Find uh, uh, one dollar unit price actually. So one T one. I will not choose the big to back to back buy. So we'll click on search now. <clears throat> back to back buy. Thank you, Monica. <clears throat> So it is now saying one is in stock now, fine. So if you go for 15 quantities, I go for 15 quantities, it will now say it will be low available inventory now. <clears throat> so we have a low inventory availability. So we have only 10. So we are now going for 15 now. So 10 will be shipped from our warehouse and then the five will be interfaced to uh, what's called your uh, uh, purchasing. Now. Thank you for that. And then normally whenever a back-to-back -back has been configured, it is not required for you to give a warehouse now, fine, but it is not giving error actually. I don't know why it's so. <clears throat> Let me see now. Right? If it is not, if it is not again giving error, we'll now add the warehouse or you can always place. Supply is not wrong, normally required actually, it's not that point. So the back to back has already been configured fully, and so it has to take care of everything now. No so otherwise, we have to add the warehouse. Fine. Uh, so click on submit by which the sales order gets submitted. Mm. So we'll now go there, notepad. So I will now put the sales order number over here now. <clears throat> so the sales order is now submitted for 15 quantities. So we have a stock of 10 now, right? 97392. 97392 is the one. <clears throat> so it will now go to the processing. We'll now switch to the fulfillment view. Fine, go to the actions and then switch to fulfillment view. We are switching to fulfillment view now. So you go to the fulfillment lines. <clears throat> so go further now, fine. Click on the do number now, find the distributed order orchestration number I'm clicking on. So go there, it got scheduled. Fancy. So there is no need for us to basically specify the warehouse there now because the, uh, the global uh, order promising is already uh, taken care of now. Thank you for the <clears throat> So go there. The supply request is now completed, fine. and then the pass is also completed. Thank you for the question. Now it will be going to wedding shipping actually. So it will be creating a supply order actually. It will now be creating what a supply order. So we have one document on this now, fine. On the, what's called, on the additional docs records three, we have a 20 do scope document. On the additional docs records three, we have one document called do scope, fine, double point and then have over it. So scope is going to begin once when the process supply chain orchestration starts. 
And then once when the inventory is available on the shipping sub inventory, it ends actually. Right? Score ends now. Whereas the do is a higher level, it begins on submitting the order, and then it ends on once when the line status is closed actually. Right? So the score is a sub process of this now. Right? So this comes into picture only for a back to back. And otherwise, score will never come into picture at all. Only for a back to back enabled items will be coming now. Right? So it begins it. So here, uh, the, uh, if you go on and see this now in this place, mm -hmm. okay. so supply request has been initiated. Normally, after scheduling it becoming as a reservation now, fine. here in this case, it is a supply request has been given now fine, for a back to back item. So now, waiting shipping has come now. Fine, now fine. So we will now see the score number now. Fine, for the so go to the fulfillment lines on the click on after the orchestration plan is now got completed and got awaiting shipping. So click on the fulfillment lines. You go to the fulfillment lines, and then in the bottom on the supply details, if you go down, you will now find a supply order number has been created over here. <clears throat> right. So we can even click on the supply order number and then go for it. Otherwise, what happens? You can go and then right click and then duplicate. Find right click and then duplicate, and then you can even go for the score straight away now. <clears throat> so go there. So click on. So in this order, if you go and then see, find the line is a single line only. Find the line is a single line. 15 quantities are there. So the line is a single line. So we'll now go there, go to this place, and then we'll now go to the supply chain execution, and then you go to the supply orchestration area. Now click on the supply orchestration. And then we'll now go to the, in the top, you click on this, and then you go there, go to the managed supply lines. You click on the managed supply lines, you're going over there. So let me query on this item. Okay? The item starts with the 1T1 now. And then click on search. 1T1, I'm going to make a search. <clears throat> so there are multiple things that are coming now. So uh, I think this is the previous one, fine, where uh, we had a, uh, it has already got fulfilled actually, fine. We made a mistake and then what happened and all that. So if you see 2301, it has got two things, fine. One is what, we'll now click on this uh, score number, now, fine. Click on the score number, fine. Click on the 2301. So the 2301 ending, you can also see on this place also. On this place also, you can see, fine. the 2301. So we can even see from this place. Now. So here, you can now see uh, that the line has got split into two now, fine. <clears throat> the line has got split into two. So here, uh, if you go on and see this now, fine, over So there is again an error here now. Fine. The error is coming. Fine. Click on the error now. Fine. You will see what the error. Is. <clears throat> so there is the error now. Fine. The charge account cannot be generated. So that means what we are not given the charge account. The transaction accounting builder cannot be. Done. So for creating everything, there are three accounts which are required. Fine. The charge account, the accrual account, and variance account. They have to be set now. Fine. So that is the reason now it's now giving it now. Fine. So let's now go on and set it up. Now, fine. The charge account has not got set. So the buy has not uh, has got a problem. Fine. The ten quantities are going to be shipped from this place. Fine. That part. So they're not having any problem. So we have to give the charge accrual and variance account. Fine. Right click and then duplicate now. Fine. And now go on and set it up. <coughs> So click on it. Go there. <clears throat> so uh, you click on the setup and maintenance, uh, and then here you go there. In this place, you go to this place, and then I will now go to what? Drop it down. I will now go to the manufacturing and supply chain management, and then here I will now go to the manage, uh, manage mapping set now. Manage percentage, map percentage, set percentage. So first of all, I'm going to set up the charge account. Fine. I go to the cost management of this now. Fine. Cost accounting of this management set. Fine. I will now set up the charge account. So before which, what happens? You can go there. We will now open up the what's called uh, our Excel sheet. Now, click on a file, and then we will now open it up. Uh, our this thing, now, this is a rapid implementation sheet. I'm opening it up and go to the natural accounts. So click on the natural accounts and go to So go to this place, and then here the charge account. <coughs> so middle charge account we're going to use now. Fine. We normally use one four one zero and that account. So we will now say inventory metal value. So this is the one we are going to use it now. Fine. So, and then the company, if you go on and see the company, what are the company, you know, uh, choose those things. And then the, the account is what the charge account is 1410. So, we will now sell the scope of it. Now, there's a cost management, there's a scope, fine, for that account. Now, drop it down, and then go to the self and add, <clears throat> and then click on apply and go to task. And then let us now sell the scope. Now, there's a cost management. Go down. So, choose it on the left hand side, and then I click on save and close now. <clears throat> it's not done. So go there. You know. So we will now go to the what? Material charge account. Material, and then make a search for it. There are three accounts which has to be set on the purchasing. And the, the one is the material charge account, first account. Fine, that's fine. Material account organization, I'm going to set it up now. So click on it. So let us now set it up. Go there. So we will now add our chart of accounts. Click on plus now, fine. And go to add the chart of accounts. So drop it down. Is the 1T1 now? Fine. 1T1 is the one. It's available there. Fine. Choose it. And then here we are going to set up the account. So one T one has been chosen. It is now coming at the bottom of mine. So here go there. Click on plus now. Fine. Let it now add. 
So the account number is go there. Three point one four one zero is the one, and then I will not drop down the company. I will not choose the first company actually. You know, zero one is the domestic ops, and then the department I will not choose it as a zero zero zero. So it is a one four one zero. It's an account. <coughs> Inter company. <coughs> I will not make it as a zero. And that's it. So we given it, and then we are going to make it as a default for all the inventory ops. Fine, click on the set as a default. So if you give it, it will now become a default for all the inventory ops. Fine, click on set as not fine. The star will be put by the system. Like, please, you do not put the system star. The system has to put the star, and that's it. So the first account is now set. Fine, the charge account is now set. Fine, go there. So go up, and then click on save and close. Now the accrual account has to be set. So we'll now go on and see what is the value of the accrual now. <coughs> So accrual account organization is basically a liability account. Right? The liabilities will be starting on two now. Right? So we we'll now see two two one zero is the normal account now. Right? So two two one zero. So uh, I will now use two 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 zero now right? because uh, this is uh, basically two two one zero is used with the payables actually. So we will now use two 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 zero for our purchasing now. Right? Uh, payables accrual uh, uh, accrual payable training. I'm going to use it now. Right? So we have seen the difference between these two in our procurement training actually. Right? So leave this for the uh, for the payables, and then we will now use the two 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 zero for this. So go there. Click on it. We will now go on the query for the <coughs> accrual account. The maintain now. So accrual account organization. Fine. Two 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 zero. We are going to use it now. I will now add the chart of accounts over here. Now click on plus, and then let me add the chart of accounts for this now. Fine. Drop it down, and then it is one T one US. And then it's coming up. You can now see one T one is coming. Fine. Click on plus now. Fine. We are going to add two 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 zero. Is what two to two zero is the one. Yeah. So again, the same thing now. <coughs> I will now use the company as a zero one, and then department as zero zero zero, and then here account is two to two zero, <coughs> and then this uh, this uh, intercompany will be zero 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 one zero zero zero. That that way you are doing now. zero one zero 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 two two zero one zero. And then I will now set as a report. It will be for the, all the inventory arcs. That's it. So this is now set now. Five hundred two point seven close. You know that, <clears throat> and then finally, what happens? The variance account is it's called invoice phase variance account. Fine, go there. So we'll be using normally an expense account. So these are the three accounts which are required for procurement. Fine, then only what happens? It is set properly. Fine, go there. So invoice phase variance account organization. So when you learn the uh, procurement module from me, you will understand very clearly. Now, fine, go there. So click on it, and then I will not drop it down. I will not choose what one T one years. One T one years. So you go there. Click on plus now. Fine. So click on plus. So one T one years is now coming. Thank you, the account. So here uh, the account we are using it is in something somewhere in five thousand and odd. Now, fine. I'm not very sure about it. So I will now choose some expense account over here. Now, fine. The expense accounts are available here. Now, fine. <coughs> so uh, this is uh, basically for uh, uh, invoice price variance. Now, fine. So invoice price variance is five to two zero. We are going to use this. Now, fine. This is the account I'm going to use. Now, fine. Five to two zero is the one I'm going to use. It, now, fine. Okay. So it's a zero one zero zero zero. Fine. Brother. Five two two zero hyphen. Uh, I don't know how many uh, characters are there. Remember exactly. Remember again. So, so that's the point. We will now go to that one, and then we will now populate all these things. So hyphen is a separate actually. It is a four segmental chart of accounts, which is required for our app implementation. So we are now use that actually. <clears throat> uh, so this is the third and final account which is required for the procurement. Right. So once when it is set. We will now uh, resubmit it, and then uh, we will now see that the X mark, the uh, red X mark, will be going away. Now. <clears throat> so go there. So drop it down. So it's a company account. So it's only two two digit number. I was uh, wondering what were two or three digit number. So click on set as a default now. <clears throat> no set. So the third and final account is now also set. Thank you for saving us. That's it. <clears throat> now we'll now go to this place, and then here <clears throat> there is a problem here now. <clears throat> So we will now resubmit it actually. Fine, click on done now. Fine, go there. So click on done now. <coughs> and then uh, we have queried on this. Fine, select it. And then here, what happens? We will now resubmit it. Fine, select it. And then we will now resubmit it. Fine. In the SCO area itself, you know, the charge account, the accrual and variance account are set. Fine. Select this line and then click on resubmit now. Fine, we are resubmitting it. So two three zero one is the one which is giving a problem now. Fine. It is now resubmitted. <coughs> Select it, and then we are done. Let's submit again. Click on search again. You now see that it is now resubmitted. Yeah, it is now resubmitted. The error is gone now. The two three zero one zero error is gone now. Click on it. Go there. 
So now if you click on refresh, you can now see this. And there will be more. So 10 quantities, we already have it in the inventory and so what happens is already reserved actually. And then here, if you go there, in this place, if you expand it, and the two expand it, the buy is coming over here. So it is in process, it is in the requisition stage. In the requisition stage. So here, if you go there, so the SCO will be giving three recommendations, either buy, make, or transfer. In this case, it will be giving a buy recommendation. If I click on the buy now, we be having a look at So if you go to the execution documents, it will not take some time, fine, that's not coming up, fine, that's not. so we will not click on refresh now, fine. it has to take up. So since we are not given any numbering, so it will be having a requisition number as one now, fine, automatic numbering will be one now, fine. So is it the requisition number, last time we had done something, so it is now given a two number, fine. requisition number is two now. Fine. It is by the core five quantities, not created. So if you go to the buy, so buy also it will be showing you this. <coughs> so the buy is also showing the same purchase the requisition as got created. So the execution documents is now coming over again. And then if you go to the orchestration plan, you can very well see purchase requisition. There will be a tick mark which will be coming up on this page. So click on the so in the meantime, since uh, we have already uh, what I must have created uh, the username for the user, not for the for supplier, not for the model, go to the home, not for the model. Now go on the take a copy of the com now. Now open up Opera <clears throat> and then paste it over here and entering now. <clears throat> go there. So here I have now given a one dot n one now. A one dot n one is the one. And then welcome one two three the one. You are transferred my you know signing in. So here once when the purchase order is now created, you can now see all the supply portal. So now go to the supply portal. And then you click on the supply portal. So the moment the purchase order comes in, what happens? You'll be getting a notification over here now. In the main area on the info lit itself, you'll be getting a notification that your PO is now created. Now, in the meantime, what we'll do is we will now go there. So no data is available as of now. Fine, that we'll now go there. So we will now ship the product or whatever the 10 quantities we are going to ship. Now, right click on the duplicate now. Fine, right click on the duplicate. The 10 quantities we are going to ship. <clears throat> so if you go to the manage orders, now fine, that's not, the manage orders. So here. If you click on refresh, so the 10 quantities which are available in our stock, what happens? You're going to ship it. So if you click on done now, click on done, come to the main area. So it's not showing you this now. So it does not ship the main area. So the purchase, the sales order number is what? 97392 is the one. And go that click on it. In this place, we go there. So we'll not give it done now. We are in this place now. So we will now go and then ship the product, supply chain execution, then go to the inventory management. And then we'll now go to the shipping. So we have already 10 quantities available over here. Thank you. <clears throat> so here, go there, go to the shipments now. I click on the shipments. And then here, go to the manage shipment lines. Manage shipment lines, the one. So, that, so it's again, what was it? 97392. So 97392 is the one. Thank you. Go there, click on search. Now. Sometimes we have to modify this schedule ship date as what well, before or something like that. Sometimes it works. So do a, a small r and of this, and then you have even some saved searches available over here, through which also you can better. So some or other, it has to come to this area. So go to the actions and then go to launch pick release. Now. Pick release is now getting launched for the 10 quantities. So we have a stock on this now. Uh, so we need 15 and then we have it now. So 10 will be basically done. <clears throat> So go there. So it will be going to what? Uh, staged actually. Fine, go that one. Save and close. Save and close. So the 15 corners will be getting split into two now. Fine, 10 and 5 actually. It will be getting split into two. Fine. <coughs> go there. So we have it now. Fine, go there. So ready to release is now coming. Fine, it has to get split into two now. Fine. So click on search now. The entire quantity has been uh, interfaced to shipping execution actually. Fine, go that one. Ready to release one day, thank you that point. So now give a save and close. <clears throat> Maybe it might have been locked, I think. Fine. We have to buy and then then it will allow you to do the shipping, I think. Fine. It will not allow you to pick at all. Fine. So let us now bring in those five quantities also and then afterwards we'll not try to do this one. <clears throat> so uh, we will now bring everything over there now. <clears throat> So, so let us now buy this product and afterwards bring everything and then afterwards what happens? Will do it. Normally, it normally allows fine ten quantities has to come over here. Fine, it is not allowing. It is not even that, what happens? Uh, picking up. It's not uh, even touching it actually. Fine. So let's now wait for it. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> 
So let us now go to purchasing and then we will now convert the requisition to a purchase order. Fine, duplicate it now. Duplicate it. So the process gets changed now and then here and there. Now I will now go to this place. <clears throat> Uh, I will now go to the procurement now. Go to the procurement. We will now convert this into requisition day purchase order. Go to the purchase order area and then we will now go to the process requisition. Click on it. We will now go to the process requisition. We go to the process requisition. <clears throat> so go to the process requisition and then let us now query the requisition number actually. So in this place, you can now see. Uh, the execution documents, if you go on and see this, no, fine. it is a requisition number is two now. Oh, God. It's, a, it's a different one. Ah, 97392, what do you say? So if you go to the buy now, thank you for the buy. <clears throat> what are the one or something else? The sales order, the one. If you go to this place. So click on refresh. Fine. 97392, is it? 97392. So here, if you go to the buy now, so the document number, requisition number is two, and requisition is two. So if you go to the uh, orchestration plan, it shows you a reservation number also. Right? The requisition is not created. So okay. so requisition number is two. Go that point. The process requisition number. We will now put the requisition number as two now, and then remove the buyer and then query. So you can search. You can search for it. So it's now coming. Fine. There is an I indication. Fine. It says what. This is uh, going to be, those goods are going to be, if you click on I, it will now say that the requested goods are to fulfill the customer's sales order. Fine, nobody can touch it actually, as and when the supplies are over. So select it and then click on add to document builder. So we are adding it to the document builder now. <clears throat> so only when all the 15 are available, it looks like it is now allowing you to ship actually. <clears throat> so these concepts will now keep on changing it. Fine, since we don't have any BPA over here, fine, click on OK directly. So no blanket purchase agreement is available. So click on OK and then it will be listed over here on the right hand side. Click on the document is there. So click on purchase order. Right? Click on create. I'm not going to get a purchase order. <clears throat> so now we are creating a purchase order. So the supplier is already there from the GOP area. Right? So that's why the supplier has already got populated over here. The supplier has got populated GOP. They are given that. That means what only when everything is readily available, then only it will allow you to ship it so low. So whereas the score has got split into two now, fine. One for ten and then one for five. Whereas the sales order is intact with 15 quantities. Fine. There's no if you click on refresh now, fine. There's no split at all over here. We don't have any split here now. But the score has got split now. <clears throat> you go to the order lines also, we don't find any split over here now. Fine. Everything is now intact actually. So go to this place and then here it will be creating a purchase order. So once when the purchase order is created, so uh, we will now go there and then we have to see the approvals of the right click and then duplicate. Let us now see whether the approval is automatic or not. So we have to keep that at automatic so that uh, we will be in a position to do it. <clears throat> so let us now test the approvals also. Right? So manage document approval is a task through which whatever they want to do, click on it and go there. And then you go to the setup and maintenance. <clears throat> and then you will now go to the placement. So click on search now. Had we made a BPA, everything would have been automatic. Manage percentage, doc percentage, APP percentage is an entry now. So you go to the manage purchasing document approvals. And then let us now see it to automatic. And there are so many things have been done on this time. So let me disable all these things. Disable it. So disable this now. People are experimenting on this now. Click on start it. And then I click on disable now. So I will now take one of the post serial approvals and go that on each rule. So I will get a new rule now. So click on plus now and now make an automatic rule. So take a copy of it and then put the description. So rule always applies. I'm not giving any condition at all for this now. I click on okay now. And then I will now make it as automatic. Click on add action. And then here I'm going to make it as automatic. Drop it down and then make it as automatic. And then click on okay. There's no completed and that part. Give a save and then deploy. You are saying, and then click on deploy. So we are not deploying. And then enable this one. Find post approval serial. I'm not going to enable it also. <clears throat> so that when they submit it, it will be getting approved automatically. So we will so we'll not enable it. The rule has been enabled. Find post approval serial is not enabled. Now we'll now come back to this place. Fine. So the document purchase order was created. Thank God. <clears throat> so here, 
will now go down and then go to the schedules and then you know give the rates now. <coughs> Since procurement has not been fully set, we have to what happens is that the receipt routing also manually actually. So go to the schedules now, and then we'll now save any model. So the requested date is coming automatically from the sales order actually. So sales order wanted on today itself. So if the requested date on the sales order is different, it will also be populating the uh, days differently. Select it and then go there. So click on edit now. Point will now do the result routing over here now. So go down. Fine. Yep. The result routing is coming automatically. Maybe from somewhere else it is not picked up actually. Fine. Otherwise we had to populate it over here now. Point click on okay. And then here we will now save and then validate the PO. Click on save and then go to actions and then go to validate. So by validating it, we will now see whether it is now eligible for approval or not. Click on save. You know, save everything. So good actions. It will now check all the accounts whether everything has everything is okay or not. And then each and every lines, the schedules, and distributions. It will now make a check. Whether there are good actions and validate. So the validation process will now check the PO whether it is everything is intact or not. And then if you go and then click on the manage approvals, it will now say the application developer has to approve now. So we'll now submit for approval. So the PO number is also two, no, fine. The requisition number is also two, fine. The PO number is also two because I've not set up any numbering above here now. So it doesn't matter. <clears throat> so both of them are two. No. So validation is now uh, validating it. There are no errors other than fine. So click on the manage approvals. It will now say who has got approval now, fine. So it will now, there, here the approval is basically a list building mechanism. It will now build the list of approvers who are going to approve this purchase requisition or purchase orders, whatever it is now. So in this case, we are now set it up as automatic and the remaining rules have been disabled. And so it will now show the application developer. The person who is now creating this particular purchase order is known as application developer. So it will now show the application developer has to approve it. And then we will now submit for approval and then it will be getting approved. So once when it is approved, it will be appearing on the iSupply portal actually. <clears throat> upon approval, the iSupply portal, it will be appearing upon. Now. So we are now clicking on the manage approvals and then we are going to have a look at it now. <clears throat> Then afterwards, we will be creating a AS and now fine supplier is now going to create AS. And fine. So the application developer is the person who is going to approve. Fine, click on submit and fine by which this gets approved. So this will also be reflecting on the score now. Fine. The score also will say that uh, the purchase order is also created. So as of now, what happens? It will not have anything at all. Fine. It is now submitted for approval. Fine. Application developer is the person who has to approve. So there is only one approval because it is automatically set actually to approve now. So the document has been submitted for approval. So if you go there and then this place, if you go there, so you can now see a tick mark coming on the purchase order also. And to the, question of time, the tick mark will be coming out. It will not take some time here. Yeah, it won't be getting updated immediately actually. So the execution documents, if you go on and see, it will not show you all the execution documents, the purchase documents also. So if you go to the buy also, what happens, you cannot see this no matter. So all these things are coming up. So requisition number, the purchase order number also will be coming up. So we will now go to this place and then how we look at it. So we will now uh, log out and log in and then see whether he has got it on the So you'll be having a, what's called requiring attention that will be coming over here. Click on confirm and then go inside again. <clears throat> so go that a one dot n one. So it's uh, welcome one two three. So click on sign in now. So once the people gets approved, what happens? He'll be getting a message over here. <clears throat> Come on, come on, come on. It has to show me now. The P is approved now. So, till now, the approval process is now going on. Okay, we're not done. Okay. So you'll now go there in the in the first part of the manage purchase orders. So, you go to this place. So this is no more required now. In the process of position, you know, that's not done. Okay. So we're now completed it. You now go to this place <clears throat> and then you go to the manage orders and then look for the order number two now. So here order number is two now. No, not. Then it's okay. And then when thank you on search now, it has to show you this. So it's open now. Fine. Open means what? It is open. In Nebus, it will be coming as an upload here. It is open actually. So he has to get an intimation. He will be getting an intimation. So there is no refresh icon. Okay? Is there any refresh icon here? I don't know. So click on the home icon. We'll come back to the supply portal again now. Fine. Click on the supply portal again. So click on the supply portal again. <clears throat> so you'll be getting this requiring attention is coming fine. Okay, one number is a thing. If you click on it, and you'll see the purchase orders will create actually. Okay. Let us say this supplier is now in a Darjeeling, and then uh, my company is in Madras. So it will not take approximately seven days for him to ship the material. 
So what he will do is he will now make an advanced shipment notice that from Darjeeling I have shipped it. So why don't you make a payment now? It's, we will be getting the goods only after seven days time. So an advanced shipment notice may be created in the supplier actually. So you will now have a look at it and then you will now create an advanced shipment notice. So it is now created, ordered, everything is now shown on your map. So we will now create an advanced shipment notice. And click on it. So when you, when you go there, we will now create a ASN now. So click on the create ASN. So you know what to create ASN for this. So he will now query the purchase order number. Fine. 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 So this happens in many companies. Fine. 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 So click on create ASN. <coughs> he will be getting ASN for this number. So we have got five quantities on the purchase order number. So the shipment number, I will now say Nana underscore one not the shipment number was not the freight terms. Uh, I will now say buyer pay freight. The shipping method, if you are given it one T one one you would have and how is now shipping it? So number of uh, supplier packing units is now three. Bill of lading number is dwindling. And the baby is now jingle account. So packing slip is Kadamaja. So you will now give everything, whatever is relevant to it now. So tariff rate is two, everything will now give it one. So you will now say the quantity is going to be five. So five quantities, he has now shipped the five quantities with these details now. So that quantity is now going to submit it. So by Nana 101 A's and we'll be getting cleared. So, you know so the physical material may be arrival or arriving at what was that, a week's time. So or some, some other time. So A's and facilitates us to make a payment to you immediately. So instead of receiving the purchase order number two, we can also receive the shipment number also. A's and also can be received. Fine. There are two ways of doing it now. So it all depends upon how the company is operating it actually. But for shipping it to the customers, we need the material physically. So normally we will not do a physical uh, receiving actually. Fine. Once when it is arrived. So you must provide a value for the tar weight units of measures. Fine. I've given it. Fine. It's not asking for this. Is, uh, two is now given. So it is not asking for this. No point. I will now say tar weight units of measures is what? Uh, kilogram. Kilo. Key. <coughs> Since I given two, is now asking for a time to I will see whether it is getting created or not. A is an estimate created now for the five quantities. It is called advanced shipment notice. Some people will not trust actually huh? supply. So item is coming. So on the paper document itself, we will not do the result. Now we are going to perform a result in our system. Now make it a little bit we will now go to the supply chain execution of another part. <clears throat> we'll now go there. So click on it. Uh, and before that, if you go on and see here in the in the sales order, if you go on and see this one, go to the fulfillment lines and then have a look at it. It is now awaiting supply will be there. The, you know, point. So if you go to the place and then click on that, do number over here on the fulfillment lines on the supply details, we go there. So goods partially available. Otherwise, what happens is the awaiting supply will be done because we have stock of 10 now. So uh, we have a partial supply available over here on this place. <clears throat> so go that you want. Now go that you want. So I will know uh, what happens. I'm going to, going to perform a receipt now. So I go to the supply, uh, go to that go to place. I will now go to the what's called, uh, I will now go to uh, inventory management now. Supply chain execution, I'm going to go to the inventory management. So I'm now going to perform a receipt now. I'm going to inventory management. I will now receive based upon the ASN number. So it all depends upon the convenience how you are going to do it now. So go to this place. I will now choose the receipts now. And receipts, and then go to that what's called receive expected shipments is the one I'm going to go there. And then here I will now put the EAS number. Right? NA, NA, and then give a tab now. Right? So once you give a tab, it will be coming up automatically. So the full number is coming. Thank you for So based upon the documents, you have sent it via fax or email or whatever it is. Now we are going to perform a receipt. Now, right? So if the physical material may be coming a bit late. But uh, this is going to facilitate payment for the supplier actually. Right? That way they normally work. But in this case, we need a physical material also. Right? But I'm now assuming that material has also come along with the A's and actually click on the same. So we are now given a standard receipt. And so what happens? That we are now going to make a gate receipt first of all. Oh my God. So for the five quantities, I go there. I cannot give a sub inventory at all in this place. I'm click on create receipt. Click on create receipt. So the A's and has got all the details of the shipment actually. Right? So we have a packing slip number, shipping method, the receipt date, fine. the baby bill number, everything is now available in the ASN itself. So everything has got populated over here, I find one go, and go that one, you will now submit it, by which what happens, the goods receipt note will be created. Thank you, Consumption, now we'll be having a goods receipt note number. So we only have the shipping parameters, the receiving parameters for the org is fully set, now fine. So 2001 was the for the first sales order, when we made RMA. Now for the sales order, what happens is now 2002, the GR number is now created. 
So I'll rather go there and then we'll not do the put away of the song. Put away. So click on it. Now go there. Click on it. We'll not perform a put away. And click on the put away results now. So click on the put away results. So it is a 2002 is a GRR number. And we'll click on search now. You're not searching for it. And then we'll not do the put away first. Select and click on put away. By which the item will be available on the inventory company. Once we do the put away, the item will be available on the inventory. So in this place, the sub inventory is a mandatory if I drop it down. Right? Here it has to be as a sub inventory because it is now received from the supplier actually. Only on an RMA, we had to put an expense sub inventory over here. Whereas here, since we are now receiving from supplier, it will be as a sub inventory if I click on sub inventory. So the receiving process is now complete. The purchase order is now created. The receiving process is now complete. Whatever transaction is now created. So if you go to the SCO area and then click on refresh, no fine. So click on refresh. Now it will be getting refreshed very slowly actually. Right? You go to the orchestration plan. Now only the PO number will wait. So reservation is not on. The put away is also complete now. So once when all these three activities are completed, then what happens? The SCO is now completed now. Okay, go there, click on it. Now. So the SCO gets completed. The SCO is completed. So I now closed it from there. So afterwards, what happens? Only the do has to get completed. <clears throat> so it is now showing awaiting result now. Fine. So click on refresh now. Fine. Now it will now say goods available. Inventory is available. It was not previously having but I'm awaiting result. Now inventory is available now. Fine. All the inventory is available. Fine. So if you go and then have a look at the sales order, fine. The goods partially available. Now it will be saying goods available. If you click on refresh now, fine. The goods will be available. The goods will be available for shipping. Actually. <clears throat> goods available. So previously it was goods as partially available. Now we'll now go and then ship it now. Fine. Previously it was not allowing us to ship actually. So it's not done. So it's not, the inventory is available. Click on it. We'll go there. So we'll now again, what happens? We'll now go there and then make a search of this one. Right? We'll now make a search. So we we'll are search now. So we are searching for it now. So it's not going over here. What are the actions and then now launch the pick list? This time, what happens? It has to pick now. So that means what? If it is a 10 plus 5 means what? It is now waiting for uh, all the items to be available. Then only it is allowing it to ship in one go actually. Right. Now give us even close. It will be getting staged actually. You can also see it will be getting staged. So it is ready to release. It will take some time. More time, more time. So click on search now. <clears throat> so it is now staged. Actually. The line state is now got staged actually. Save and close. So the shipment number is also created by itself. You know, stage. So click on the shipment number, and then we are going to perform a ship confirmation to the customer actually. So we receive from supplier, and then afterwards we ship it to the customers. So it's called a back to back buy. Thank you for ship confirm now. We are ship confirming it. All of you try to do this process before the instance goes away now, and the instance will be there. <laughs> it's a good one. And so you try to do it now. So once when you're doing it, what happens is you will now see a send shipment advice uh, uh, concurrent program will be coming now. So once that is that, it will be basically doing it. It's basically equivalent to ITS actually. It is equivalent to ITS. Interface scripts top of EBS basically. And go to the tools. And then you go to the what's called schedule process. So the send shipment advice is responsible for interfacing your uh, shipping execution to order entry actually. Click on it. So that is now running. So once it is completed, you can now see that uh, the sales order would have progressed to ship now. So click on refresh now, and we're going to progress to ship. And then finally, it will now go to the awaiting link. It is now shipped. And then if you go to the orchestration plan, the invoicing process will now start. It will now ship. Click on refresh now. The invoice processing will start. So in the whole of the process, the line has not got split at all. The line has not got split at all. Only in the SCO area, it has got split. Right? The school area has got split. But even then, it is not allowing you to ship there. It is not waiting. It, is not, it has got an interlock and then it is not waiting for the file also to come. So after that, the file arrives, it has not allowed you to come. So the invoice has started. So once it is done, it will be pushed into the interface tables of receivables and then it will not go to awaiting billing. So this completes a complete back to back buy now. Try, try, and then if you're succeeding it, please post now. I'll be very happy to see it. It's a big process. And so what happens is you have to do it in a very proper manner. So, uh, they will not go to what? Avoiding billing. 
So I don't want to wedding wedding. And then the rest of the process we already seen yesterday itself, fine. So that, that way you have to do it. So this completes a back to back buy. <clears throat> buy for now. And then in some other video, I will now make a back to back transfer also and then show it to you. Right? Buy for now. And then uh, we will now do it in the prime time of the, of the classroom also. Right? So then we can even interact with people. Right? That is the best thing. So what now?